loud. Okay, even I can figure that one out. Oh, look at that. It says recording. Here we go. Well, yeah. Okay, there you go, Glenn. I got my hand up too. Like we're all doing it. Okay, live long and prosper. Uh, good morning, everybody. It is the 10th of December, John Lavinia Success Mastermind. My name is Mark Riggle. I uh, I am the facilitator for today. So everybody's wondering, okay, so what are we going to learn today in the, uh, the leadership series that I'm doing? And I thought, based on some things that were occurring uh, this week, uh, a couple other um, areas of interest for personal uh, and business matters, I would talk. And this is kind of uh, interesting because I actually uh, identified um, months ago when we were first putting our uh, projected or anticipated subject matter together, the facilitators were doing that for John, I actually listed this um, as uh, the topic for today. And the topic for today is business bullseye targeted uh, areas of interest. And I thought, wow, how, uh, how interesting that you know the universe comes together, law of attraction and all these things that we talk about and it just happens to fall into place for what we're going to discuss today. A business bullseye, in a way, is sort of a misnomer in that it's not just about uh, there's a business or professional side to my uh, my presentation today, but there's also it's the business of business, but it's also the business of your personal matters, your personal issues. So we're going to discuss both of those. So what I'm going to do today, uh, like I do every single time. Uh, as I will share my screen, but before we do that, I am going to see who is aging. I'm just going to kind of run through the list here uh, and say my good mornings. Uh, here we are, another day on this side of the permafrost, doing well. Uh, you know, my, my dad used to say, uh, I'm still vertical. Yay, I'm still vertical. Okay. So here we are. We're three weeks away. We were just talking about this before we even started this morning. Uh, about, you know, being there and talking about uh, the transition and, you know, what 2020 was like. And Sandy was commenting, by the way, everybody, Sandy he broke her wrist over the weekend. So, you know, as you get a chance, um, I talked to Sandy too. She's, uh, she's a powerhouse. So she's a fighter. She's right back and doing it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, go, Bill. So, so, okay. Adrian. Okay. Coyle is here. Evelyn from Florida. Where's Javi, man? Uh, Bill, Caroline. My coach, Therese, how you doing, coach? Glenn, the Reverend, uh, Mr. Lavinia, the Magnet is here on board as well. Adrian, yeah, I bet you the business is just kicking butt, aren't you? Uh, let's see, Carl is here, uh, Ace, Daisy, Susie, and of course, Sandy and Julia, and Nicola. I hope you had a good session this morning. I was a little bit uh, detained with uh, my granddaughter. My apologies. Um, Suzanne from Switzerland, Janet and Edward, Linda, uh, who else? Sa Sandra, Evelyn from um, the middle part of California. Cyril's here as well. I'll go to page number two. Yeah, there's Carl. Uh, who else? My name is Mary from Oregon City up in uh, the Portland area. Colette, Wayne from the Great White North. I got Robin, Javier, Jane, I think, uh, who have I missed? Janet is here with us too. As I missed a Mandy. Okay, I want to make sure. Lindsay, Toba, they're all still jumping in here. If I've missed somebody, you can uh, you can take me out back uh, after the session. Okay, so let's kind of kick things off here. I got a nice, bright, beautiful, sunny day today in northern the north coast of California. And... It's supposed to, you know, two seasons, rain and summer, kind of like the Northwest. Most of the people from the Northwest understand what that means. But in the meantime, uh, I got a great day, so I'm in a good attitude. I am going to share my screen, and we're going to kick things off. First of all, I'm going to maximize my screen if I can. I may we'll do it afterwards. Okay. Share screen. Here we go. Share. And there we go. All righty, business bullseye, targeted named areas of interest. There is a difference in the two. Uh, and we're not gonna spend um, you know, the whole day discussing uh, you know, tactical employment or tactical 
um, you know, information, but uh, about uh, what I've participated in the past. But I think there are some real takeaways, and and some and some actually some tactical uh, nomenclature that really works across the lines towards the legal, the business realm, personal realm, and such. So this is what I'm going to attempt to do today. Um, there's my typical first slide. Talks about what I'm going to share and the time element and. As always, I give uh, the honor of the last few minutes to uh, Mr. Lavinia, um, our fearless leader. Uh, the picture on the right is just a standard picture that I pulled from from uh, the web. From the web, and if anybody's ever been in any of these kind of environments, uh, you know there are small maps. It's very intimate. Sometimes you just put them on a table. Some guys holding the map, and they're looking. And this is where we're going to go. So what we're going to do? Blah blah blah. The, here's the bad guys. Here's the good guys, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you have these huge rooms, even two or three times as large as this sometimes where you've got several hundred people sitting around a big uh, walking table or a sand table and, and they put out all these nice little symbols that uh, represent all the different kinds of elements that are on a particular um, area of operation as we call it. Uh, the picture to the left was taken back in, oh, I don't know, about 2004 or so, summer 2004 in the two circles. If you'll note the bug on the wall to the right is me and if you notice the guy at the head of the table, that's actually a mad dog Mattis. So I was his uh, G7 at the time. And he was talking to, as you can see at the table, a bunch of the local sheiks. Uh, and this went on regularly. So just a little blast from the past. Um, it was good to be in that environment and just kind of hear what's going on. It's always interesting to get a perspective. Sometimes we sit there down the, you know, down the chain. We don't necessarily understand all the things that are going on. And we go like, why the heck are we doing this? Well, when you sit in these rooms and you listen to these conversations, it gives people a little bit better perspective, uh, those kind of things. So let's get into TAIs and NAIs. Named areas of interest and targeted areas of interest. There are the definitions. But essentially, a named area of interest is more uh, more meant for um, uh, you know either a set of conditions or a particular uh, area that um, one may be looking at and looking for certain conditions in order to engage um, high value targets or things that uh, could change the the way things work the way we decide that we wanna work uh, tactically or operationally. Um, and the targeted areas of interest are typically what we're gonna do when things are gonna be much more inter, uh, interdictory, I'll put it that way. Um, so you've got, uh, you've got somebody that's moving along and this can happen in business, we'll get to that. It's gonna ha happen in our own lives. How do we, how do we intercede uh, when we, we have uh, areas that we've identified or targets, um, things that are much more specific, uh, much more detailed about what we want to change in order to affect the change beyond that. So uh, that's why we're, this is why I'm talking about the subject today. Um, templates, let's talk briefly about templates. There are, we have these thing called branch plans. What we do is we put together, um, and if you, if you wanna know, um, for example, a sit temp, those are situational templates. We put branch plans together. In other words, if things go this way, this is what we think we'll do. If things go this way, this is what we'll do. We do this every day in our own lives. So this is not new to us, uh, to each of us in our own businesses and our own personal lives. This is just, uh, you could see that Heck, this works in the, the military and operational environment, uh, the tactical environment just as well. When you look at that template right in front there where you have NAIs and TAIs, you'll see that you can see the arrows. You know, this is, uh, this is movement. This is particular movement of say, uh, you know, an opposing force coming through. This could be movement of things that are happening to you in your business and your personal life. You could use it that way as well. And then a named area of interest, what's happening at a particular decision point? What happens an hour into a particular fight, a day, a week, et cetera. And then the reason you've got these little, these, these squares that are in a diamond, you know, you form, formatted in a, in a diamond shape. So they've been turned a little bit is now it, what we're talking about is this movement or, or conditions are beginning to change. 
And if conditions change to a point that we see where you see A and B on, on the template, for example, then these are the things that we are going to go after. Now we are going to engage to try and change the dynamics of that particular environment. So that's why they're moved off a little bit to the side because there's movement, there's conditions, time moves all, you know, you know, every second things are changing all the time. So that's why we see this. And this is just a, this is a pictorial representation that is meant to show that while you look at say H plus one, H hour plus one, uh, you know, H hour and then one hour later, let's say that these were the conditions where the two NAI squares are, and then th th there's been movement and you see the diamonds of A and B. So they've moved here, uh, they've moved into a position and now we can engage these particular targets to attempt to remove them or change that or eliminate that opportunity for somebody to engage us further. Um, so how, do, how, how would we apply these? Uh, first, uh, as we all do, we have to understand where we are. We have to understand where our business is. We have to understand the conditions that we personally deal with, with our products. With, with our environment? What are our capabilities? What are we able to do? What kind of training did we go through? How much effort did we put forward? Uh, and where do we stand? What, what can we, and we need to be realistic about this. So what can we and can we not do? But I, I, you know, the one thing I'll say is that we can have all these things that we think we're capable of, but until you cross that line of departure until you start to engage. You don't know the truth. And that's why I say occasionally, you hear me say it, a uh, plan's only good to the point of execution. Because once you start to execute, things change. And now you're in this ever evolving, ever changing um, uh, environment where you have to evaluate. You have to evaluate yourself. You have to evaluate that which you have around you. And you have to evaluate that which is that you are being opposed or working against. Or it might be actually working with you. And, and how does that all interrelate? And that again, second is having the knowledge of that side. Third is being able to adapt quickly. And fourth, you know, it's rinse and repeat. Um, I'd like to, uh, and some people here may have done this, uh, have uh, have looked at um, this or know who um, Colonel Boyd is and have heard of this thing called the OODA loop. The OODA loop, observe, orient, decide, act. Essentially what this is, is this is a, this is a process of working through a series of steps at a point that you are inside the OODA loop of your adversary. You're inside the loop of someone else. In, in their decision process and what they are reacting to, if you can get inside that and react more quickly, you can gain the advantage. Oh, I think this is a great application to the, the marketplace and the business world. It, we see the same thing. If you have competing products, for those of us who are on, you know, on the Amazon, uh, Amazon side too, what have we been learning? How do we differentiate our products with those that we are competing against? Uh, that's sort of the same thing applies. How do we get inside that circle? How do we do things? How do we differentiate? How do we make things happen more quickly? How do we put something out there before our competitors do? How do we get that? How do we gain that advantage? And you'll see that's what this is about. So as you work from left to right across the uh, the schematic at the bottom, you know that's uh, and as you read through those items here, you know this is all that's happening. Uh, we're taking, you know, we're taking, we're observing all this that's going on, and then we're orienting ourselves and what our conditions are to the conditions as a whole. And then we look at that information, and then you look at sort of that, you know, the the, the pentagram sort of, a, you know, symbol there, and the other things that go on around us that we take into consideration that gives us the orientation how do I fit into this? How does my company fit into this? How does my organization fit into this? How does my product fit into this? And then we move to decide. And as, as John, you know, in this environment, as decide, you know, it's not just about being done, it's about acting. And uh, you know, the saying is, you know, here we, the paralysis of analysis. It's one thing to, 
get uh, it's one thing to analyze things, but you can just overanalyze and you get kind of caught up in that. Decide, keep moving, get inside of the loop of the other person and then act. Uh, and, and if you are wondering what this might sound familiar to uh, this, this has any other um, affiliations. I don't know anybody out there who is in the manufacturing uh, or the process environment um, or has been uh, in, in those environments, but you might see some familiarities in this schematic in a way. I don't know if, if anybody here has heard of the Stewart cycle of plan, do, check, act. Um, many years ago when I was in aviation and I was overseas um, in, in Japan, we worked, uh, I, had a, I had an organization called the Support Equipment Rework Facility, and we reworked support equipment, aviation support equipment for the Navy and the Marine Corps. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of items doing deep level rework. And we, we implemented this, this whole idea of plan, do, check, act, the short cycle. You may have heard of the Deming principles, you know, that uh, were an outcropping of post-World War II Japan and, you know, or early days of Japan. And we used to think, oh, the Japanese don't make anything, you know, worth keeping. And look where they were in the 90s. They were just kicking our fannies with quality. You know, the same sort of thing happens in the, in, in the short cycle of plan, do, check, act. You're establishing upper and lower control limits. You're a and you adjust your processes in that way. And as those things improve or, or slide, you make changes in the process to try and create greater efficiencies. And that's essentially what we are attempting to do here is create greater efficiencies in how we operate every day. I wanted to throw this just to kind of take a quick break. Here's an F-18 cockpit uh, for those who have, uh, have, have, maybe you've been to an air show and you've looked inside of one of these things. Um, I spent, uh, you know, I was in an F-18 squadron as a maintainer. Uh, I've got a lot of, uh, I've got a lot of um, um, time in simulators. I actually know what most of this stuff does. And uh, I've got uh, some backseat time and F-15s and other aircraft, uh, just as, you know, nice to have things. If you get all the calls, they take you up and say, hey, thanks for helping us out. It was uh, quite a time. My early days had a lot of fun. On the left, you could see um, this is what the inside of uh, an F-18 looks like. Now, I'm sure today there's some changes, but the, 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 what you're looking at is the heads-up display, which is on the top. And, and the reason I want to talk about this just briefly is... When you look at this, you go like, oh my gosh, I mean, how does somebody keep track of all this information? Well, that is exactly the point. Every one of those soft touch uh, buttons on what we call the digital display indicators, the DDI on the left, the DDI on the right, the one on the bottom, or what is also called a multi-purpose uh, color display, an FPCD, and the HUD on the top. Those are, there are all these redundancies as well. You can push one button and another display screen will come up. The left and the right DDIs and the, and the MPCD are redundancies too. So if you lose one system, if you lose a DDI, you can go to the other one to pull up that information. Whatever is going on in the airplane, whatever is going on in the tactical airspace, whatever is going on with the systems on the airplane, the hydraulics, the avionics, you name it, these are available to you. A, a, an aviator can look at this on a tactical aspect. He can connect with other aircraft. And somebody can be shining a lantern and, and painting an image on the ground for a laser guided munition. And that person can punch in these coordinates and they can even set up the, the, the millisecond detonation times upon impact or above impact. It's amazing what is available to uh, to the person that's sitting in this seat and, and the information what they have access to it's information overload and it takes months to learn all this stuff just like in our businesses it takes time we must train we have to do continuing education that goes on here as well to the to the right you see a heads up display you see this little circle you see these little these little dotted bars if you see this little thing in the middle it looks kind of like an airplane with wings and you see the bars that go out from the side of it that's the horizon that means this plane is flying level flight 
And if you look a little bit to the uh, to the left of it, you see these three little you know, these three little numbers: the 7.1, the 0.55. He's doing 0.55 Mach. The you know this is the angle of attack, the 7.1. And how many G's is he pulling? 1.0 G's. If you look at the two boxes. Uh, the one to the left is his airspeed, 251 knots. If you look to the right, he's at 19,000 plus feet, almost 20,000 feet. This is, and and at the very top, when you see 190, and you see this little this little cursor, this little um, you know this little pointer. This is your this is your azimuth indicator. So he's flying at about 198 or so, 100 you know his degrees. So he's essentially flying you know, south, southwest, just a little bit off of flying, or, you know, off the uh, southerly route, just a little bit to the right of that. The, and all this information, and there's information on DDIs that he can pull up here when he is tracking a target. There's a bunch of other stuff that comes up as well that we can't see here. It's uh, a lot of that is privileged and confidential. But as you can see, there's a huge amount of information that uh, people have to learn. And just in our business is a huge amount of information that we must learn in our businesses. So I, I want to transition a little bit here to the to what what I would consider, if you look to the bottom, the name area of his interest, I put this sort of, uh, you know, the soft block around all this information on the professional and the personal side. On the professional side, you know, what are, you know, what are the TAIs for the professional side and the personal side that fall within the whole block of our named area of interest? What is our named area of interest? Our named area of interest is us. Our named area interest is everything that we do, everything that we are, everything within our own business, everything within our own selves. And what is what is it that's you know that the TAI, so to speak, the, the targeted areas of interest? And I'd say you could even take this down and you could get even more granular than these. These, I'd say, even to some degree, are still somewhat generalized. How deep do you go? What kind of consumers do you have? What kind of competitors do you have? What kind of products are you are you marketing? What are the services that you're providing, etc.? What does your budget look like? How much money goes here? How much money goes there? How much money do you have available? What is your overhead? You, you know, you could really get very defined on this. On the personal side, uh, what I classify or what I would say quote sort of as the the maps aspect of this, our mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual state. Where are we today? Where are we right now? Where do we want to be? I mean, the whole thing that we do here, folks, everything that we are about in the John Lavinia Success Mastermind environment is all about this. This is what John has been bringing to us since, well, since I came on board in March. But this, I, I see this is very, very defined in terms of what I am attempting to do for myself personally, where I'm going. Where are my goals? What are my milestones? Where am I going financially? How do I set, how do I put those together? Where I am today? Where do I want to be tomorrow? Where do I want to be in a week? Where do I want to be at the end of the year? What do we want to do, you know, at the, the you know, into the next year? So here are two, two quotes that I uh, pulled off, off the web that I think are rather um, interesting. And I, and I, I, I see these as who we are as well. We are the ones in this path. Well, all the other one, all the other, and I won't say everybody out there, but there are people out there that are flailing. We've talked about this a myriad of time. We are, I, I have great gratitude. I feel very blessed to be a part of this environment. Why? Because while people are suffering and we see it to this very day, we can pull anything up, we can pull thousands of uh, stories up on the web right now where people are suffering greatly. They're losing their shirts. They're losing their businesses. They're losing their families. They're losing their lives. And we came across this by whatever means it happened. We are all here. We are all in this group. We are in this family. And here we are. And we are the ones that are seeking out the moonlight at night. We are the ones that are foraging the new trails. We're the ones that are putting this together for our lives and, and, and relying upon one another every single morning that we come to this. All the other sessions that are available to us, the, all the expertise that is represented in this body of people here in this family. I just, I feel so blessed and so um, 
I have so much gratitude uh, for being here in this environment. And I just uh, wanted to share a couple of these quotes for you. So my ultimate question is, what are we gonna do for 2021? Ivier has talked about this. John's talked about this. Stewart's talked about this. Uh, you know, Glenn's talk, all the facilitators. Everybody comes out here. Kim, Sandy. I mean, how, how many times have we heard this already? What are we going to plan for 2021? What new and bold things are we going to be? At? Where am I going to be in a year from now? Where are all of us going to be a year from now when we sit here in the same? point in December of 2021, and we look back on 2021, what is it we are going to look back on a year and say, oh my gosh, look at what we accomplished. Look at what we did. And then we go back to these days coming into the end of the year and say, wow, we really, we were putting things together and we turned ideas into action. And that's that's what I have for today. And for that, I'd like to open the floor up for anybody who wants to jump in here. Please come on out. And, um, and if you've got some thoughts, Bill, um, I see your hand up. Uh, come on out, Bill. Thank you for sharing. Mark, thanks a lot. Um, brilliant presentation as usual, sir. Um, I, I think if I had had you at some of the briefings I needed to be on. Things might have been a little clearer <laughs> than what they were. Um, they, there's so many analogies you could take with this uh, concept that you've put across. And a lot of it has to be, and I understand a lot of people here will have no idea of uh, military speak or aviation speak for that matter or anything else. There are a few of us here that do. Oh, and just while I remember, um, but, uh, like to say RIP Chuck Yeager, first man ever to go supersonic. Died the other day. Uh, I mean, that's that's a hell of a thing to be thinking about when you when you think of the state of the aircraft that he went up in com compared to what would we produce today. <laughs> that man had some cojones, so he did, <laughs> to say the least. Um, yeah, I, I, it is basically uh, a, a proper preparation on everything. Uh, I mean, the British Army talk about the five P's, you know, uh, proper <laughs> planning prevents poor performance, yeah. but um, they have an extra word in there, but prevents this poor performance, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is the, usual, yeah. the norm that they will give you. Uh, and it, it, it works well. Uh, and it is about all of this. Uh, and I was, uh, a good rule yesterday, and I, 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 that continued into last night on to you. Uh, books for Britain with me uh, and it was uh, where we're talking again about Napoleon. It is all about planning. It is all about focusing on what you, where you want to go and how you want to get there. Um, and, and I'll give a quick, a quick analogy to, to our a story that in 2012, I was fortunate to be uh, part of the security apparatus at the London Olympics. Um, I got briefed in a room, John, uh, Mark, you'll know this, uh, 650 other people. Uh, and I was told on exiting the said room to pick up my information pack on my principal. And for those of you that don't know the term principal, it's the, the important person that I have to look after and organize. So I, I was given a little bit of background uh, in the fact that I knew this guy was uh, a prime minister and he was coming for a five day state visit. So I picked up my package as uh, per instructions to find an A4 piece of paper with his name on it and nothing else. <laughs> so uh, planning for a start, where do I go here? So. Uh, once after gate crashing, as I found out that the gentleman was from Algeria and I gate crashed the Algerian embassy at Holland Park. Um, and I can tell you some stories about that, <laughs> which uh, you, you would probably relate to, <laughs> Mark. But uh, obviously then everything had to go in uh, overdrive and the organizing and the planning. I had like three or four days to organize this. Everything I needed to find out, everything I needed to put together so that this whole state visit so went smoothly. And it's little old me as 
the British police representative, along with two guys from West Yorkshire. Hats off to Caroline there. <laughs> and they were outstanding guys uh, that helped. But I had everything in plan, everything in place. Had trips miles and miles and miles around central London. And it was the summer of 2012, it was pretty damn hot in London. It was 30 degrees some days, and it was lovely in a suit, traveling in a tube, uh, 30 degrees centigrade, of course, for you guys. Um, but uh, suffice to say, I got to uh, Bryce Norton, RAF Bryce Norton, to pick up the said principal on his jet. And we were coasting on convoy down into central London then. Uh, for those of you that don't know the front car with the the guy that's important is like the swan, as I described last night, on the surface of the water. The car behind me, which I'm listening to in my earpiece, is like the duck, the swan's feet. It's held for leather and screaming and shouting and running and raving, but it's nice and calm in my car. But uh, suffice to say, I was about two miles outside of central London and the ambassador, uh, both the gentlemen have been speaking in Arabic and French, which neither I had a clue about. Uh, the ambassador turned to me and called me Mr. McDonald and said, Mr. McDonald, does the hotel know we are coming? Of course, William goes into a flat spin inside his head thinking, I forgot something, <laughs> I've done something wrong. And then I realized, I says, yes, sir, the hotel knows you're coming. And he replied, but you have not telephoned anybody. And I said, I have a man to do that which was the car behind me. So my planning had been, all those guys will do all that for me. I just sit here and look good. <laughs> and that's basically what we've all got to do in business is sit there and look good. There may be a whole crop of background stuff that you've all tried to put together to get to that point. But when you're at the cellar, no matter as long as you swat room, swan onto the Zoom, swan where you look like, hey, I've done it. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, that's um, it's amazing how much goes into uh, putting these sorts of things together, how much time and effort. And what's most interesting in the planning, uh, particularly for those who, who who get stuck with planning, and I say get stuck with because everybody wants to be the operator, everybody wants to be in the action and, yeah, and, and the planners they pull their hair out because as soon as we cross, like I said, the line of departure, you know, planning's only good to the point of execution because once it starts moving, things begin to change. Uh, and one must be able to adapt very quickly. And your environment, Bill, yes, I've, I've worked in around uh, when I was in Kenya, for example, and we had people come in from the Combined Joint Task Force Horn of Africa you know, coming in from uh, Djibouti, they would fly in. Yeah, and you have PSD with them. Oh my gosh, I mean, every everywhere we go, everything that we do, every, you know, if this doesn't work, what streets can you turn down? How do you, escape routes? Oh my Lord, it was, I, and fortunately 99.9% .9 of the time, it goes pretty much the way you want it to go. But then if you have the principle they say, well, you know, I want to do this, or I want to go get this. And like, well, that wasn't on the schedule. <laughs> you know? Say, no, 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 we're doing this. This is kind of, you know, and you have to find diplomatic ways to be able to say that and to work with that. So, yeah, I feel you, brother. It's, at, I salute you, man. That, that's a tough place to be. So, good for you. Hey, Wayne, I see your hand up. Uh, come on out, sir. And then we'll go to John after that. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. I really, uh, Really enjoyed all the information you presented this morning as uh, a good motivator and a good um, reminder just to to have that plan and also have um, sort of some some alternate plans um, in place and and uh, you know I just enjoyed looking at the the F eighteen cockpit there and the different instruments and and thinking of uh, it's hard not to talk when you start talking aviation so um, <laughs> and and just. Uh, you know, just all the instruments I've seen in the commercial aircraft and, and in the aircraft I've flown um, and what they mean. And I think what was key in what you're talking about is, I mean, in, in aviation, it's extremely rare to set out without a plan. It's almost any pilot who sets out without a plan is, is kind of, I guess, a bit of a cowboy, not really, not really a good pilot. That's not good airmanship. So planning is number one and then executing on that plan follows with 
backup plans in place. Um, and, and you mentioned that if if the targets of interest, the things that change during during a situation occur, and you were just talking through the different things like the heading indicator, your altitude, um, those sorts of things. And, and I hazard that lots of people set out with uh, in life in various ways in business and so on with partial plans or incomplete plans or plans without a backup um, option in place or, or two or three in place. And so um, it just made me think of what's known as a CFIT um, accident in aviation. So controlled flight into terrain, which means that the aircraft is completely serviceable and the pilot is in control of the aircraft and yet still manages to impact um, a surface, be it uh, terrain, uh, water, or whatever it is. And that comes to the situational awareness part. Um, so I added it a 2008 to 2017 study, I think it was, um, where 6% of, of all accidents were controlled flight. And so the thing was completely serviceable and the pilot was in control of the aircraft. That accounted for the second highest number of fatalities. Um, I think it was um, following loss of control in flight. So basically um, a plan was in place, a person was executing on that plan, but in some fashion had lost control in, in the sense of not being aware of where they were anymore. So the indicators. So I think when you look at it from a business point of view and business failure, um, I think it's not uncommon maybe to see a, a CFIT business failure where a business owner um, believes that they're on the right track, but has lost control of their measurements, their heading indicator, um, where they are from a financial altitude, whatever it might be. So I think it was just a good uh, reminder for me, um, you know, even though we've got a plan, are we measuring against that plan? Are we always aware of where we're at against that plan? And if we're indicating high or low, preferably high, I get some business because it means you're making more money. But if we're indicating low against our plan or we're seeing some sort of headwinds against our plan, um, how are we reacting? What's our backup plan? Um, and what are we doing to ensure that, that we don't uh, fly into the ground, so to speak? So um, really good reminder for me, um, you know, just making sure that I've got that plan in the first place. And then secondly, making sure that I'm following my indicators, um, my, my key performance indicators, whatever it is, what the things that the measurement items that I've set in place from a business point of view to make sure that I'm, I'm continuing down the right, the right track safely. So I really appreciate the, the, uh, the chat this morning, Mark. Thanks, Wayne. Um, two things to respond to that. Uh, one, um, I, while I wasn't, um, um, I was just present at the embassy at uh, in the U.S. Embassy in Kenya back in 2003 when there was a CFIT incident, and uh, it was I want to say it was either a Georgia or a South Carolina senator or congressman that was with family and the pilot had set his barometric altitude incorrectly and they hit a ridge line just off of Mount Kilimanjaro by 50 feet and it was nighttime and they didn't even know what happened. And then our regional security office uh, guys and a bunch of people had to go up there. They had to find special helicopters because of the elevation and the altitude up there. I think they ended up using Russian helicopters because they can go higher than the US helicopters to get up to those altitudes. And they, well, you know, when you're traveling um, unrestricted and you're doing 300 knots, uh, what do you think you're gonna find? So uh, that's, that's one part of it. But uh, on a lighter note, uh, what, when you were talking about this, I don't know if everybody has, anybody has seen, ever seen this uh, far side cartoon where you got the two pilots in the cockpit and you're sitting behind them and one guy's looking at the other and there's this space in these clouds. They're, they're in IFR conditions, instrument only conditions, you know, so you can't see out the cockpit. And there's this opening and, and, they, and here's this goat with its eyeballs about, you know, about the size of saucers. And the one pilot says to the, to the co-pilot says, what's that goat doing up here in the clouds? And, you know, basically, you know, moments before impact. And it's just, uh, you have to understand far sides, uh, you know, humor, but uh, just that, do we sometimes end up in that environment where we think we got it all together, we think we're doing good and life is throwing curves and we couldn't be further from where we think our destination is supposed to be or where we think we're on track. So it's good to take stock consistently about where we are in the process and where we are in our own personal training or professional training. 
Uh, hey, uh, Mr. Lavinia, the magnet, uh, the man, the, the legend, you're up, sir. Thank you, uh, Mark, and thank you, Wayne, and everyone uh, for participating in this conversation. It's always interesting to me what, what Mark's going to talk about every other Thursday when he hosts the general session. I know it's going to have some sort of military connotation because, of course, that's his expertise, right? That's something that, that he's he has been really good at now, retired from that, but still, what's the old saying, right? Uh, once Marine, always Marine, or you would know the saying better than me, Mark. That's but it. The, um, but the thing that came up for me as you were talking, as you were giving your your uh, your briefing, your dissertation, your sitcom, not sitcom, what do they call it? <laughs> sitcom. Partial sitcom. sitcom. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> your sitcom. <laughs> Friends, yeah. Okay, great. Actually, that's, the, that's our topic for today. Um, <laughs> the, thing that, the thing that came up for me was, what was the most important part of all this planning? And I would argue communication, intelligence, right? And being able to trust the source, right? So I was uh, reading a bit about George Washington and, and how what really won the Revolutionary War here in the United States was, was intelligence, communication, right? Getting messengers here and there. In fact, you know what I wanna cover with everyone here in, in a session, maybe we'll do this tomorrow. This might be a great way to end the week. A letter to Garcia. Anyone yes. ever read that, that document? Yes. A letter to Garcia, yes. Perfect. Good stuff. So anyway, um, as I saw you sitting there with the, the guys with the turbans, I was thinking, okay, so there's some sort of an intelligence briefing, a sitcom, something happening here. And, and uh, the question that came up in my mind is, who can you trust? Who can you trust? One of the, the lowest of the low people, like lower than any you know, maggot shit, would be a traitor. Treason, right? An enemy of, of the cause. One who stated uh, allegiance and then who violated or withdrew that that um, that allegiance for personal gain for whatever nefarious reasons. I, I don't care about the reasons. That's as low as you can get, right? So, and we've got plenty of them in modern day, in modern times, right? So this isn't just we're talking about history now. We're talking about the, you know the days of yore and things that used to happen. No, no, this is real. And so what I'm thinking is, how does that relate to what we do here in our group? Which, uh, you know, many of you purportedly, right? You you experience. Uh, I've heard a safe uh, place here to to uh, experience non-judgment and to be able to communicate freely and to share your plans and to not be invalidated or violated in some way because we have no motivation. I, I certainly don't, right? Why would I break your trust? Why would I, I mean, I have no motivation to do that. It's always a, a chuckle for me when when uh, business uh, deals, they, they hand me a non-disclosure agreement. I'm like, yeah, I'll sign your non-disclosure agreement. That's fine. I'm the last person you got to worry about. Okay, but they don't know that, right? So that's the question, who can you trust? And that is the number one question on the mind of everyone on the internet, if they're thinking anyway, right? You know how many false prophets there are, gurus, self-proclaimed experts who will leave you, lead you astray, not only in the realm of like, here's marketing techniques that used to work five years ago that don't work now, or here's you know, our theory about you know, what you should do, right? I've seen people who, who sell, by the way, they sell lots of product, right? Where they do their intuitive, you know, prophecies about, you know, your business and success, the fortune tellers, right? Remember psychic friends hotline, right? So, so people, people buy this crap. As the old saying goes, there's, there's an S for every seat. I would rather be silent than offer you platitudes and, and things that, that would lead you astray. I'd rather be silent, right? It's like the old saying, if you got nothing good to say, well, don't say anything at all. Well, if you don't have good data, then you've got no data. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people peddling false data on the web. Uh, quick commercial break. Uh, everywhere I go, I have one of these on me. You know what this is? This is a tooth flossing device. Okay, fits in your wallet. Well, you can take it wherever you want, right? <clears throat> if you break off the little toothpick portion of this, which folds out right here, this is the toothpick part. If you break it off once the, the rest of the flossing device has been utilized, you can have one in your desk. And if you keep a phone in your pocket and it collects lint in the charging port, you can use one of these because it's made of nylon, plastic, soft, non-metal, and you can clean the lint out of the little thing. Back to what I was talking about. We have, uh, we have people that hopefully we could trust in our lives. We've got good data to make these plans, to make these decisions on. And... Uh, and I just cherish everyone who, who occurs as that in my life. I've had plenty of, of, uh, of, of trust violations in my life. 
And then, and that of course makes me have to look at myself. How have I violated the, the trust of others? How have I given, you know, uh, bad data, false data, misdirection, right? How, how can I be responsible for that? If this person wronged me, right? Or if I was gullible and led down the wrong path, right? What, what irresponsibility have I just demonstrated in that? Trust, but verify. Uh, Mark, I don't know if that came up in your briefings, but I would imagine any operation you're going to operate requires good data, good communication in and out, right? Everybody's gotta know what's happening and it's, it's gotta be good data. I know um, there's a book called Left of Bang, Left of Bang. I don't know if any of you have ever, Mark, have you read that book, Left of Bang? No. no. It's I'm about situational it down, awareness. So you're on the streets of Afghanistan. There's an IED in that vehicle. Okay, if you look at the timeline from left to right, right, here's the explosion that's about to happen. Can you, can you identify that? Do you sense that spidey sense, you know, whatever? Do you have enough situational awareness, experience, intel, comms, right, to know, don't take 10 more steps. That, that, that Jeep is about to explode. Left of bang. Okay, so, and then there's the bang, and then there's right of bang. That's post-event. Interesting book. I haven't gotten through all of it yet. But uh, you got to have good intel. <clears throat> That's what wins the day, I think. Um, so I'm working on it. I'm still studying, and I'm glad to be in, in, you know, in communication with people such as all of you. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you, John. Um, just uh, yeah, letter to Garcia. That would be a, a, a great topic. Uh, that's a great book. I won't. Uh, I won't. I won't say anything about that in case anybody has not read that. Uh, speaking of of trust, John and traders. I who has who's been in business? You know, it was it just Ivier was talking about you know a, a, an event that happened with you know with one of uh, their folks you know and, and all the embezzlement that went on isn't that sort of traitorous i mean when somebody has knowledge uh, and the workings uh, and the financial reins of a company and they know how it is and and they work against it to subvert the whole company and to take from the company and thereby hurt how many people did, did that lady hurt in the company that had absolutely nothing to do with this not as a they were just working at the company trying to take care of their families i mean think of the implications of how far that uh, travels uh, yeah left a bang i'm gonna i'm gonna look that book up i'll i'll get that book and read it john because i can't tell you the number of times driving uh, across msr's uh, main supply routes is what they're referred to and driving these uh, these roads and you see these you know little piles of nothingness you know just garbage or even a vehicle and every time you go by you're like okay you just start flinching up because you just think of, and you do that hundreds and hundreds of times thinking that that's the one and it never is and running over trails and 10 minutes later over over a road that I just traveled with 15 other vehicles, another convoy that was, you know, 10, 15 minutes behind us, somebody hit it just right and lost three or four people. 10 minutes later. So, and you just don't know when it's your time. Uh, and it's just uh, so... That's why I think that's another reason that we all, I don't want to get too far off track here, but, you know, have gratitude and feel blessed that we're still here doing the things that we're doing. And with regards to trust and working in and being around an environment like this, don't take that for granted um, and make sure that um, that one's own house is clean as much as possible before, uh, you know, tackling other people's houses or, or, you know, making uh, adjudications and such. Uh, hey, Bill, I see your hand up. Uh, come on out. Anybody wants to come out? Come on out again there, guy. Bring it. Mark, just uh, quickly, and I, uh, I love John's uh, advert in, in between. That just took me to the fur, John. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to clean your iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping you've been sponsored by somebody for that and are making money on it. <laughs> um, Listen, I, I, everybody here, it's been pretty serious stuff there, you know, what you've been uh, telling us uh, about, you know, planning and that, and certainly from the military side and that, it's a, it's all a, about seriousness and briefing. But I'm, I'm consciously aware that I am trying to boost myself as well as boost everybody else. So I'm going to give you a quick briefing lesson on how not to do it, if you don't mind, Mark. Uh, 
it was, if anybody does know this guy, or if you don't, please look him up. He is the Irish president, uh, uh, president of the Irish Republic. Uh, the, the Garda, the Irish police, nickname him Yoda. That gives you a high, uh, an idea of his height and stature. Uh, and he was coming north of the border for a visit to the Queen's University at Belfast, where he was opening a new C.S. Lewis room. And you'll all be aware that C.S. Lewis wrote The Land, The Witch and the Wardrobe and many other great adventures. Um, uh, and certainly the, my still to this day, my favorite book. But if you can picture the briefing room was filled with uh, hairy ass policemen, uh, sort of waiting for the bosses to do their bit. And my boss happened to be this lovely little inspector. He was about, you know, I don't know, like a teenager compared to me and most of the guys in the room. Um, and he was, he's, he was always deadly serious. So he was giving the, the quick briefing about uh, the, the, the way the plan would go. And he says, when we drop the guy off at the front door, we will go on through then to the back of the building to the library. And we'll take the lift at that point up to the new C.S. Lewis room. And when we exit there, we will enter the, and it went on and on, and we went enter there. There are any comments to which me being my sharp witted unseriousness said, for God's sake, nobody let him walk into the wardrobe. <laughs> and if you know C.S. Lewis in the land in which the robe, we may never have found him again. But <laughs> most, of the, most of the old guys would have fell about laughing. Of course, the young, the young boy wasn't that impressed, but hey, you gotta live with these things when you've got people that are a bit more worldly wise. But that's the other thing to remember about business is don't take it all too damn seriously because you ain't going to do yourself any good. Enjoy it while you're on the ride. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Bill. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, we are just about nine minutes to the hour. And um, those who have wanted to share have. Appreciate your time. Again, today um, was really about taking stock in, in where we are personally, professionally, and the surroundings. And uh, keeping it, you know, from a leadership standpoint, um, taking the lead for ourselves and for those around us and those that we help. Um, just carry on. And in the, uh, you know, the, the Amazon and e-commerce world, um, do what you can to evaluate those conditions and uh, an approach and tackle those, those targets that uh, can help your business and yourself flourish. And with that, unless there's anybody else, I'm going to sign up because I don't see any other hands. So thank you for your, your day and appreciate everybody attending today. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. There you go. Fine. Thanks, Mark. Yep. Take care, everyone. And I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks, Mark.